Welcome everyone again to our last, our fourth and final Tones Knit Along Zoom meetup. Um, thank you again for coming. I'm going to go ahead and go over our intro things. Um, so yeah, if you have been to any of our first three knit nights, this will be a repeat for you, but it's important to go over each time. Yeah, I'm Mary. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm here today with Jen, who is co-hosting, and several other BT team members. I invite you all to include your pronouns and your display name if you choose. You can do this by clicking on the participants icon at the bottom of your Zoom window, then find your name, click on it, and choose more and rename. We want to ensure that Brooklyn Tweed events are accessible and welcoming to all participants. We have closed captions available for this session. If you can't see them, click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble with this or with any other tech issues, please post a message in the chat and we can try and see how to fix that. Uh, thank you for helping us making this. Thank you for helping us make this a welcoming event. We believe that knitting and crochet is for everyone, that all garments are for all bodies, and that craft should be a safe space for all. We acknowledge that here in Portland, Oregon, we are on the unceded lands of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, and other forcibly displaced peoples, and that we live and work in a city and state historically barred to people of color. We recognize our privilege in being here today. We would love for these meetups to be a fun, relaxing community space, much like a knit night, to spend time together and share our projects. Please keep yourself muted unless you are speaking to cut down on general background noise. We ask that you be respectful of your fellow participants during these meetups and try not to talk over others since Zoom can get a little messy when too many people are trying to speak at once. I think we've had pretty good luck with that so far. Please feel free to raise your hand using the option in the reactions menu at the bottom right or to write in the chat if you have questions or things to add while you are waiting to speak. You're welcome to, to participate in whatever capacity you feel comfortable. And yeah, um, welcome again, everyone, if you were coming in while I was speaking. Um, it's so strange and wonderful that this is our last meeting. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear about your project. I know I've been seeing even more finished, finished projects um, in the Ravelry forum and on Instagram. I am closer to finishing my sweater. I'm on the first leaf. Um, I did a preliminary block, like a wet block of my sweater just to see how long it was before I bound off the body. And I'm just, I'm so into how the color work turned out after I blocked it. Um, it's a little hard to show on Zoom, but uh, I was a little worried about the increases on the back making a lump and they definitely flattened out. Um, and so I'm so glad, <laughs> I'm so excited to wear it. So. The, I'm actually, I was telling Jen and Liz that I'm using the tapered sleeve instructions from the first raglan pattern instead of the instructions from the um, bouquet pattern because I wanted like three quarter tapered sleeves instead of the long ones that are in the pattern. So it's going great. It's going real fast. Um, I'm really excited. It's so uh, beautiful, Jen, do you have Mary. Thank I was just going to say it's so beautiful and it, it's it's been sitting on Mary's desk right behind me and every time I walk by, um, <laughs> but it, the colors remind me of, is it Wedgwood um, pottery? The, the kind of blue gray with the, the relief motif on the blue, the blue gray. It's so beautiful. So I can't wait for you to wear it. Yeah. It's funny. Like I got so used to doing the color work on the yoke and body and now I'm just like doing single color on the sleeves. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't have multiple things going on and I'm not using a chart anymore, but just, it's a fun little like cool down, I think. <laughs> it's um, new sailing from here. You've done all the yeah. hard work on it. So. I see Wynn asked about tips on speeding up drying and we are very spoiled here at the office because we have like a spinner. Do you know what it's called, Jen? Or like, you know, I, I don't know what it's I, called. I don't actually. Yeah, it's like this little mini centrifuge that you can plug in. Yeah. And it it's amazing. It like gets all the water out. If you let it go long enough, it, it really does get all the water out almost. Um, and then you lay it flat and it's dry within like a day. Cause I know like when I was doing this preliminary blocking of my sweater, or not sweater, but like 
the Yoakum body, it took a whole weekend to dry because I didn't, I didn't soak it at the office. I soaked it at home. <laughs> so, um, I definitely like, it is a good tip. If you have something, even just like, if you have just a spin cycle on your washer, it's a little risky. I I've like messed up with that before, but if you're able to ensure that it's only the spin cycle on your washer, you could try that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, spin dryer. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure the brand, but I'm I'm looking and the pictures look um in Panda. It looks like there's a company called mm-hmm. a brand called Panda, and I think there's might be a yeah. So yeah. yeah, my things at home take like three days to dry, and here it's like overnight. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm a little we're nervous they're gonna dry before I get it all pinned out. So yeah, that's happened to me before. And I usually at home I'll use like a spray bottle to spritz it down. Um I need to like coax things, but I keep forgetting to bring a spray bottle here. And so last time, I think when I was blocking my first raglan sweater, I like went and got a bowl of water and it's just like and flicking it. it onto the sweater because it was already too dry. Oh no, oh, winter, winter starts taking so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it dries soon. One thing that um that I I loved that Jared did here was to get some very um inexpensive PVC pipes. And we'll sometimes mm-hmm. insert those into like the sleeves or the sides of the body just to give a little um, breathing room between the fabric. Um, I keep meaning to pick up some of those for home. Yeah, same. Like, and that helps avoid creases too if you're doing a whole garment at once, which can be really nice. Very maybe a pool nice. noodle would work, maybe. Yeah. Kind of? Oh, yeah. 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 Like a, a, a thinner one, depending upon the size of what you're making. Good ideas. Yeah. I kind of made a mistake when I was putting the um, PVC pipes in my sweater in that blocking video, Eric. I didn't think to put it in through the neckline instead of through the cuff. Um, When Allison blocked her, she like put them in a different way and they actually were like in the crease of the sleeve. Whereas like when I tried to do it, it was not all the way over because I did the blouse sleeve. (laughs) <laughs> so something something to add if you're going to do that oh bubble rack that's a good idea too basically anything yeah. that you can do that like keeps it rounded and lets some air flow through that's a great idea sherry um, thanks for sharing that yeah i've got bubble wrap at home jen do you have your current first raglan that you're working on with you i do um so this is for my my partner um so this is nimbus undertone so I, yeah. um, I'm working on the body. So I've got a couple different projects. I don't know what happened. Like the, the leaves turned color and I just want to cast on everything. So I, I have a <laughs> few too many things. And then I didn't bring it because um, I thought I might be at home for this session. But I, and behind me is our um, Calderon, uh, one of the fall uh, from, uh, was, was that last year or two years ago? Um, Last and year. one last year's fall and I did a Calderon in tones that I'm loving wearing because it's just the perfect little layer to throw on over things so yeah <laughs> but I'm excited to see what everybody else is working on Rebecca sounds like you're ready to share yeah I'm hoping that this works because my internet's been a little wonky I'm just sorry oh everybody is Oh, no, people are still moving. They were, they were frozen, then they were moving. Um, coming to you from up in Ontario, Ontario, Canada. We do have reliable internet up here. It's just, <laughs> apparently I personally don't. Anyways, I was at the first um, knit along and then the, I had conflicts for the other two, but here I am. I'm way behind, but I'm working on kind of a striped version. So you can see I'm not like that's where it ends right now. (laughs) But and I don't even remember what these colors are because I ordered them long ago. But there are either both undertones or overtones. I know I went with the same and I just got two colors that I thought would go well together. And this is the first pullover I've ever knitted. I've knit a couple cardigans, but I've never been sort of really happy with them. So I'm hoping with the guidance that I've gotten from everyone, um, I will wear this all the time. And thank you so much for doing these. I know this is only 
in my second, um, as I said, but it's been, uh, it's been really cool. Thank you so much for coming too. And your sweater does look gorgeous. I, I love those like two very subtle colors that you put together. Thank you. Yeah. I'm hoping it works when it's all done. And, um, I'm hoping that I've got the right number of rows in every single stripe. I'm, I think I went with 14 and I think there's one that has 13, <laughs> but nobody will notice. Yeah. It's beautiful. You didn't use it with good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been knitting for, I don't know. I moved to this neighborhood that I live in now and there were a bunch of um, people my age on the, this particular block and they had this regular knit night. So I just kind of showed up as a new member of the neighborhood and that's how I got into it. So that was 12 or 13 years ago, but I've never knit a pullover. So it's great that the, that tones came out and that the um, first raglan powder came out pattern came out because it's really kind of inspired me to give it a go. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing and for coming again. That's beautiful, Rebecca. Yeah. Does anybody else have a project they want to share? Let's see, I see Eric's hand raised. Great. Am I on? Am I live? Yes. Oh, there we go. You're good. <laughs> oh, hang on. Same problem. Better lighting. There we go. Um, <laughs> so I just came from the gym. So I'm like, I was like running. Um, I am almost finished the body. I'm onto just the last little bit of the rib for, I'm going to twin with uh, Caleb on our ot sweaters. We kind of have similar design motifs. Um, I'm obsessed with this. I tried it on. I actually did put it all on and sort of see how it fits. Fits great. It's awesome. Um, so this is the um, baseline overtone, zest overtone, zest undertone, and baseline undertone. So I just did the two stripes, and then the rest is all in just the gray. But I am obsessed with now having a pink sweater. I've decided I'm going to branch out from green. And I'm going to go completely the opposite side of the color wheel. And I want to do something in pink, in tones. That's kind of my next thing. Kind of. That sounds amazing. I and I, I don't know, like pink and green also go really well together, I think. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking like a full, like full pink. I just have to decide on sort of the color, but I want something like, I think I was inspired a lot by um, the frames conversation last week where, you know, I would, I would love to take like a really hyper masculine looking sweater yeah. and do it in what's considered like a totally non-traditionally male color and just like bend that, you know, sort of gender paradigm a little bit um, as opposed to, because normally I would take like a predominantly female sweater and convert it into a male sweater. I'm kind of thinking doing it the other way around. So can't, just some thoughts, can't so. wait to see it. Well, you'll see my have order come through from some yarn. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same question as Liz. Which color are you doing? Are you doing wallflower, hollyhock, lychee? Yeah. I kind of think I want to do like hollyhock. Nice. I think, I think. I haven't decided yet, but I'm kind of feeling like something like really different for me. Like a, something that's non-traditionally... Eric, like you can see, this is all BT sitting up here waiting to be knit and they're predominantly masculine colors. So, you know, except for like, there's a couple of pinks in there for ranch three, I think. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be one of the next things to do. Nice. Your art is looking so good. You've like just sped through that. <laughs> well, I'm doing this finish along as part of my sort of I started in September and I'm running it on my YouTube channel. So it's like September and October is like finish all the whips so that you can get like deep into the new projects. And nice. unfortunately I'm not good at sticking to my own rules. So I cast on like a bunch of new projects, but I also finished them. <laughs> like so I figure if they start and finish in the same time, it still counts. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to try and plow through this. Uh, and try and finish the sleeves before the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. It's Thanks, hard guys. though. Like I've been having the same thing that Jen was talking about and that you were saying, it's just like, I want to cast on so many things right now. I have to focus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I've cast on like 
three sweaters. This one is one of the three. I think I've cast on three in the past like two weeks. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not I mean, horrible. Yeah, I did. It brings order you joy. Then it brings you joy. Yeah, I or I did order the um, the yarn to do the Kiesling sweater last week, so Good. it's on its way. It's coming. What color? What are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm on a really strict diet right now, so I don't have any carbs, and I'm like brain dead. What's the color the the marl that's done in the sample? Caraway. Oh, Caraway. Yeah. That's the one I did. I ordered it nice. in Caraway. Yeah, I loved it. Nice. I just thought it was amazing. So yeah. That will happen too. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah. I feel like that colorway is really underrated and I'm glad to see it out there more. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. The amaranth color yeah. I really, really like too, but the caraway one is like, okay, I gotta have that. Yeah. yeah. Caraway's like um hayloft like boosted. I don't know, it has it has little yeah. additional flux of color throughout. It's just really gorgeous. I did the uh, halo shawl in hayloft. And absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. And now I'm like, okay, I, I think I need something else in that color because clearly I have not enough green sitting behind me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mary. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Good luck with finishing your project. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, we can check in with Caleb and Brian if y'all are ready. Yes, we are. Sorry, we couldn't unmute. Hi. So Hi. I finished my um, pot. Yeah, right. it looks so good. <laughs> I'm like obsessed with it. Somebody on um, YouTube told me that the neck looks a bit tight and uncomfortable, but it's not. So good. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> it's very comfy <laughs> and it feels so nice. I, uh, I love it. Obviously, I love it because it's my second one. So so nice. Um, and I'm still coming along kind of slowly on the Albion sweater, but I've got not slowly quite a bit. You so made so much progress. He keeps telling me, oh, it's, I'm going so slow. Oh, this is taking me so long. <laughs> it does feel like it's taking a long time. But I'm um, within one or two inches of finishing this main body part. And then I guess mm -hmm. you, s you separate the front and back to move on to the shoulders. I haven't really paid attention to that part of the pattern yet, but I'm pretty close to that. So <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be done in the next like two weeks if I move fast it's, enough. It looks beautiful. It's Thank funny because when he, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but whenever he um, did the swatch, he was worried that you wouldn't be able to see the texture. <laughs> like, it really yeah, pops. Yeah, yeah, it looks so good. It's amazing. I think a lot of people too, when I was looking at the pictures on like Ravelry and stuff, they had really dark colors and they just had like mm -hmm. straight on lighting. So it just didn't show yeah. the texture as much. But yeah, I love the yeah, way you really cool. get that. Oh, the stage you really get that looks, relief in the pattern. I was just going to say, it looks like um, a really wonderful scarf. You know, you could do like a long <laughs> rectangular <laughs> scarf or fall just with that stitch pattern because it's so beautiful. Yeah. In that. Oh, yeah. I did a. Um, Oh God, what's it called? It's a Julie Hoover wrap that was knit for uh, loft held double. Um, I want to say it starts with an L. It's in a blank on I think it's Ludlow. Yes, yes it was. I did it that. Nice. <laughs> and it, I love that thing, um, but it would look so good in tones too. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be perfect. But I also have another one. I finished um, <laughs> my spark wood. Yay. Um, I probably should have done an extra repeat because it like doesn't, I like my hats to go down kind of low, but, um, it still fits really well and I like it. Um, and I did this one in, it's the granita that I had because I had ordered way too much whenever I got scared that I wasn't going to have enough. And then this is, um, meteorite in shelter from leftover from my failing sweater. So it's Those just sweater, sweater leftovers. Those colors are so good together. I love it. I, yeah. it um, it's like Scooby Doo, but make it fashion. It's my uh, shaggy hat. I love it. I was gonna it also reminds me of mint chocolate chip in the back. I was, way. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say too. <laughs> I just every time I see green and brown, I think of Shaggy because um, he wears brown pants and a green shirt. But yeah, totally mint chocolate mm -hmm. chip too. 
Gorgeous. And congrats while you're here, Caleb. And thank you for yeah. your beautiful piece that you wrote on degender on degendering fashion in our our lineup for frames. So well, thank you for so thoughtful me. and yeah. And I'm I posted the link, but I'm gonna post it again. Um everyone here, if you haven't read these pieces yet, um, they're four very thoughtful pieces um that are just uh really worth taking the time to read through. So thank you. Thank you. My next project will probably be from that collection. Well, my next sweater, I think. <laughs> Wait, so what are you working on now that you finished your sparkwood? Um, so now I'm in the, um, well, I just finished a shawl. So I knit, um, oh yeah, where's that? I don't know where I put it. I knit a shawl, it's just <laughs> like some nitpicks. Um, I did that, that was like my palette cleanser. And now I'm knitting, mm -hmm. um, I'm finishing up a little wave cardigan um, that I, it's in a sweater quantity that I just had in my stash. It's, so it's not in um, shelter, but um, mm -hmm. it is a Brooklyn tweed pattern. And so I have knit this portion of it, but then I just kind of like set it aside. So it's got like the twisted stitch, you know, waves. So I'm working on finishing up the first sleeve because um, bottom up. Yeah. Oh, it's great. But it's going to take me a while, but I really want it because it's really <laughs> nice. Like Brian's wearing his cardigan today because it's like 50 something. So I need a cardigan I can wear because the only cardigan I have doesn't fit me properly. They're perfect for oh, later. No. Cardigans are the best. Yeah, Brian, did you say it's a little wave? Uh, oh, I said they're perfect for layering just because you can, like this time of year, it can get too warm quickly, but it's like chilly in the morning. So it's just easy to take off. So I like to have cardigans which I've only made three so far, but I'm planning on a fourth already once I finish this. Is that Same the here. Spark and Spice? Did you make that one? Yeah. Yeah, this is the nice. Spice one. That's beautiful. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, he was just telling me, he said, I think it looks sloppy. I'm like, what? <laughs> there are Brian some things that I would like to perfect. Um, so this was like my practice one. So I'd like to do another one with uh, Steaking. He's his own worst critic. Who was talking about? I think it was Liz. Oh, go ahead, Jen. Was that a little wave that you were holding up? This one's a little wave, yeah. So just a caution, the sleeves and the pattern, I I think are a little longer than they should be. Oh, really? Okay. I've, I've taken out, uh, I had to take three inches out of the one for um, my father-in-law, and I've known other knitters that have had to shorten the sleeves. So just Even with up. the rolling up? Of the okay, yeah. good to know. So just, a, just a heads up. Okay, thank you so much for telling me that. Because yeah. I'm getting you hear that from Jen. You might be done. You might be done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need just maybe a couple more, maybe one more episode of Lucifer of knitting. <laughs> <laughs> if Jen, our pattern production director, says that there should be an adjustment to the pattern, you should definitely do it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I feel like earlier this week, Liz was talking, was it Liz? I don't know. I um, was talking about how like knitters, anytime we show someone our project, we have this like compulsion to point out things that went wrong or things we don't like about it. It's like no one else would notice that. It's mm -hmm. just us. <laughs> totally. I, so I bought, um, yeah. I was watching Andrea Mowry's um, like little Friday Q&A thing. And she was, somebody had asked her a question about, designing and she mentioned um two books and one of them is a book that I should have gotten a long time ago but it was Knitting Without Tears the Elizabeth Zimmerman book yeah and so I bought that and I was reading it and it is I'm gonna make an episode all about like perfectionism with knitting because there was like this paragraph where she was basically saying like if your stitches are uneven who cares yeah. nobody yeah. cares mm -hmm. like if you wanted it perfect you would buy it or something like that and it was just like she's right like it does not need to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's true. I feel like I want to emulate Elizabeth Zimmerman's attitude in like most things. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like a sassy lady. I love it. She's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much for sharing. It's thank so cool you. to see everything like come together. <laughs> Let's see. Does anyone else have projects to share? And they don't have to be finished. 
We'll no. talk about this. Hi, Sherry. Yeah, I see your hand is raised. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Good. I'm uh, working along on the truss cardigan. Yeah. It's work from the bottom up. And this is actually like the side. It's, it's written in for one color, but I decided to sneak in another color. That's so cool. I love how you're doing that. So there's the back yeah. and then the other side. Beautiful. It's turning out so good. I love these little eyelets there. I don't know if you can see the eyelets. Yeah. So this is wallflower and persimmon. Looks beautiful together. Yeah. And now I understand when you, when you, you recently posted a, a full photo on Ravelry yes. of all the, of all the way across. And now I understand why you were using the word intarsia because I wasn't putting I it all together, but now I get it. So, yeah. So it's not really intarsia, but the fact that there are all these bobbin skeins yeah. that I have to deal with, that's what yep. I really meant. Yep. So, but I, I really love that it. Intarsia. Yeah, I would too. It's a little challenge, a little extra challenge. It's a little yeah. challenging, but um, it's just working up so nicely and the, and the yarn is, it's just such like a brushed cottony um, velveteen almost. It's really amazing. I love it. Beautiful. I love I how you're making the pattern the color. Yeah. And just like, look at that texture, it's so. So good. It's really fun. And that's, is that corrugated ribbing in that part? Yes, it is too. Nice. Yep. Gosh, that's so cool. Mm. Beautiful. So I'm um, plugging away, slow but sure. <laughs> Will you carry okay. that the persimmon up into the upper part of the body or will it just be on those? It will, it will end at a point under the arm and then the rest will be in the wallflower. Nice. Don't know yet about the sleeves. I don't know if I'm gonna add a little at the ribbing on the sleeve, uh, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Let's see. Mon Monique was ready to, would yeah. you like to share? You're raglan. You're raglan. Yay. Beautiful. It looks wonderful. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I'm so glad you're through it now. Are you smooth sailing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Is it the, the wallflower undertone? Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Monique. Well, if anyone has projects or questions for us, we'd love to, to see or hear them. I could show mine. Hi. Hello, yes. Oh, I'm on the Zoom. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Regina. Oh, okay, this is also another uh, raglan in the uh, hollyhock undertone. Nice. I love the color. Mm -hmm. it's so I do have a question, though. It seems to fit, except I'm afraid the armholes might be a little bit too big and mm. so could anyone suggest to me how I might decrease a bit when I start the arm the sleeves thanks yeah you could definitely like work some more decreases after do you mean like in the sleeves themselves or in the body in the armhole mm -hmm. maybe yeah picking I up think you could fewer stitches across the um, the underarm when oh, you're ready okay. to pick up all the way around. Um, and then as Mary's saying, maybe start your decreases a little sooner. You could decrease a little more frequently too. 
Okay, thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, thank yeah. You. Yeah. The underarm's it's nice, a nice place to hide any of those things. So mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dina. It reminds me of um, raspberry sorbet to continue on our yeah. ice cream, <laughs> our color themes. So, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I see Eric is asking about the next batch of tones. Um, we are still waiting on receiving it, but it does look like we should hopefully receive it in late December, early January. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> Yeah, I see Cindy has a hand raised. So I just wanted to, can you hear me? I just wanted to show, this is, I did the throw over. (gasps) And then I did the color work in the Brooklyn shelter. So Brooklyn Tweed shelter, yeah. So I just love it. And I've I've only worn it once, but I had so many compliments on it. So I thought it was really fun. But I want to show you what I'm going to do with the next one. I'm going to try to show you. I don't know if this is going to work. Let me see here. Just a second. I'm going to see I if I have some schemes lined up. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, oh, well, I'm going to try to do it. Can you see? There. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. That's gorgeous. Okay. So can you see the colors? So yeah. I'm going to make that first raglan with, with that, those colors. Nice. Um, I think that's the pattern I'm going to use, but those are the colors I'm going to use. So I'm pretty excited because I don't normally do stripes. And I had a friend of mine help me with pick out the colors. So we had fun picking them out. So I just wanted to show, saying that the stripes are going to be, it's going to be super fun to knit <laughs> with all the colors. So mm-hmm. that's all I just wanted to share that. So that's going to be awesome. Thanks. I love the neckline on your throwback. Looks really, yeah. really cozy. Thank you. You know, it it fits me so good. Um, I think the sleeves I should have made a little bit bigger. Um, I knit super, super tight. Um, and even though I swatched, <laughs> it didn't turn out to be the exact same size, but it fits really good. It's just I normally wear really baggy sweaters, so it kind of makes me self-conscious, but um, it just is super comfortable. So, and I love the yarn, so... Anyway, that's why I decided to zoom, come, come in on the Zoom because I really wanted to show you my, my colors because I think it's going to be so much fun to do that. And um, I plan on just going in and um, doing the math so that I know that I have all the stripes. Um, I'm going to begin and end with the, Paris, whatever this one's called, the Parisma, what is it called? Per, Persimmon? Uh, yes, in the undertone. I'm going to start and end with that. Nice. And then have the stripes. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, I think it'll be fun. It sounds. But fabulous. I'm doing a Christmas present first, so it's not. I'm gonna. I have to make a couple shawls for Christmas, so it's not going to happen right away. But anyway, I just wanted to share the colors. I thought that was going to be fun. Mary, will the um, the Ravelry fan fan club will the the chat threads stay open where people can keep sharing projects. What is that a place where we could? Yeah, I, um, I think I should have clarified the language a little bit, like posts up through the end of November 3rd will be eligible for prizes, but you can still post things in there afterwards. Um, I know we left that like that for the, um, evergreen knit along last year. And it was really wonderful to see people's projects coming in even after, you know, the knit along was technically over. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much, Cindy. It looks wonderful. And I'm so excited for your sweater. Um, well, let's see. I thought I saw another hand raised. Maybe it was just my zoom doing weird things, but um, let's see. I might call in some BC people because I know you have projects. <laughs> Catherine, do you have any granny skirts to show off? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, she's coming. <laughs> she's blocking some granny skirts right now. Um, and we were all oohing and eyeing over them in the office. Um, but I think she's also working on stuff. So. <laughs> So I have started joining um, my sister's Christmas present, this little afghan that I'm doing. 
<laughs> so that's the first oh, part. Wonderful. We'll get, get them going kind of like that, alternating. And I love the blanket fort. The, the purple is just the perfect yeah. color to go with these. So thank you for everybody who chimed in on that last week. Um, Cause it's going great. But yeah, yeah look so at these subtle. little guys. I mean, come on. It's so them. summery in the middle of October yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew that I was going to like the blanket fort with that, but I like, I really do. I'll check it out. Oh, and Catherine amazing. is in the in the warehouse. I see Rebecca's asking about that. There's a lot of yarn behind her. <laughs> oh, oh, if I could tell you what's out here. <laughs> Just wait till next year. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, but yeah, that's how that's going. And I'm really enjoying it. It's super bouncy, like. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see the spring. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's really <laughs> stretchy. So I think it's going to block beautifully. <laughs> oh, there's Mitch behind you. I think he's oh, trying to hide. Mitch is <laughs> on camera. Uh -oh. <laughs> Mitch is our wholesale specialist. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much. That's so exciting. I'm always like, what are the granny squares today? <laughs> The ones I that I'm blocking like are still wet. They're they're still yeah. a little damp, so I'll have to show those off next time. They've got like a gradient um, of colors going out from the middle, and I think it's so gorgeous. Oh, Catherine's our resident crochet expert. Mm -hmm. Some of us have dabbled in it, but she's our she's our go-to expert. Gonna get yeah. you all on the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> If you're willing to teach, I think I'm willing to learn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Granny squares for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Catherine. <laughs> Patricia, I think you got your hand raised. Yes. Um, so just yeah. during the Zoom, I finished. <laughs> it will oh now have goodness. to be blocked. So it's the first raglan um, in a size four melba undertow so i did the the body length just a touch longer and the arms just a touch shorter but other than that i followed the pattern exactly wow that looks really great Congrats. So now i have to figure out though how to post on ravelry i've never done that before oh yeah so after i Beautiful. block yeah so and that's it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy wearing it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I mean, I tried it on during the mm -hmm. process and um, really liked it. I actually thought that um, the neck was absolutely perfect because I don't like tight necklines, but I also don't like boat boat neck. I hate them when they're falling mm -hmm. off. The, and this yeah. I thought was absolutely perfect, like super comfortable, but stays in place. Yeah, not too rude. It's yeah. such a happy medium, yeah. Yeah, I did the German twisted cast on nice. for the mm -hmm. star. I love that cast on. So, and then I just did the bind off, simple bind off in pattern for the bind offs. Mm -hmm. And is that the blouse sleeve? Did you do the blouse? Sleeve? I did, I did, and That's I really love nice. it. See, I actually have the opposite pro. Well, it's actually what the other woman was saying in terms of not liking I hate it when my sleeves are tight so I actually did do my I did add a couple rows to the yoke too just because I really like to have lots of room in the underarm area um, but then I thought that was so nice how you just got that little got the puff in the sleeve by just working from where you were at mm -hmm. yeah we love hearing all the ways people modify the patterns and I'm I'm finding that especially this this first raglan is easier for some reason for me to modify than others so I actually started out on a size four which is the one I did uh size I did for this striped one but um 
but I actually kept going. And then I, I'm now doing size five for the numbers. I, I kind of kept going until I got to the size five numbers for the body. And, um, there are just so many ways to, to make the pattern your own. So exactly. Really- and it was so easy to do. I've recently discovered those barber cords. I, I don't know if people know about the barber cords. Show They're us. Like the no. best things ever. You, um, you hook them onto your needle and then you slide the stitches over and compared to yarn, your stitches don't compress the same way, but they're the most comfortable stitch holders to like have. And you can even just put them at the end. Like if you want to try on, you don't have to take your needles off. They stick to the needle so well that they will like allow the stitches to move. And if some of them move over while you're trying it on. Um, they're called barber cords. They're just the best. So I did that. And then it was so easy to just try it on several times. You know, I tried it on for the arms, for the body length, for the sleeve length. Um, yeah, that, that is a big advantage of the top down design. So anyway, (laughs) that's wonderful. I've never seen those. Yeah. They're called barber cords, B-A-R. I think it's B-A-R-B-E-R. And oh my gosh, I will never use anything else. I mean, they're just, because you it's, they're so easy to move the stitches on and off. And, and then like compared to Erica's other the- like stitch holders, they're oh, so yeah. comfortable to have on your work. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because it can get a little tedious to like put things on and off of waist iron. And if you have something that just like slips Oh, in, exactly. You just slide it. Yeah. It slides yeah. over real easily. Yeah. That's so we cool. love tools around here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, and is it correct? You can post it on um, Ravelry and Instagram. You can post, if you, yes. on both, you can post it on both. Yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah. And I see, oh yeah, Rebecca found a great um, link in case you need help posting on Ravelry. Their team is is very helpful, so. Oh, oh thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, this was my first knit along ever, too. Oh, I've no. knit for like, like decades, and it's the first one because I'm a multi project person, so I don't like deadlines, but I just, I had seen the promos and bought the yarn from Church Mouse and stuff, and then I thought, oh, man, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make a deadline. So, you did it. We're so glad and you you're did here. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, we're so glad to have you part of it. Yeah, thank you. This is you. technically my first knit along too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'll be doing mystery ones though. I'm not sure I'm going to go no. that far. But <laughs> I've been watching all of the like the Stephen West one that's happening right now and it looks so beautiful, but I just like, I have to know what I'm making. I like, I was telling Jen the other day, I don't deal well with ambiguity. Like I can't, I can't like yeah. oh, embark on this thing that's going to invest so much of my time that's and not my know what problem. it's going to look like. That's my problem. I oh. can't do that kind of commitment for something. I don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah. 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 It's um, always fun to, to watch so other much. people do it though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like jump in and get the pattern once it's all the way out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Hey, Tammy, Tammy, you have your hand raised. Goodness. All right. So I've never shared my knitting before. Yeah. Um, I obviously work at Brooklyn Tweed <laughs> for people who don't know. Um, and I was a fiber nerd before working at Brooklyn Tweed, but I wasn't a knitter. So I started knitting when I started this job. And I'm doing the first straggling. Um, it's been in a bag for a little while in my work backpack. So that's why it's all wrinkly. But, um, and this is my actual first sweater. So the mm-hmm. first straggling is my first straggling. And I'm getting there, but I also haven't knit much on it for the last month or so because it's fall and I freaked out that I've got to get holiday knitting done. So I've also cast on for the um, first cables hat and I'm going to do a Nisa shawl for my mom. And then I'm editing um, 
products for the holiday collection that's coming out in November and thinking about what I'm going to make next and maybe spend a little bit of time shopping for more yarn today. So I'll finish it at some point. <laughs> Tammy, remind us Tammy, when you started, been... when did you start knitting again? Um, for those who don't know. It would have been right before the start of the pandemic. So early 2020, I started working here in November of 2019. And for the first few months, I didn't want to try knitting because I was very solid in I'm a weaver and I don't need to be a knitter to work here. And then I started knitting and I've actually, my poor looms have just been really lonely for a while now. Tammy's a very talented weaver. Uh, but we were so excited when she wanted to learn to knit. Uh, I think we kind of probably were a little bit overbearing when you first like <laughs> wanted a knitting lesson. We like all basically just ganged up on you in the kitchen. We're like, this is how you do a slip knot. Or maybe you don't do a slip mm -hmm. knot. And then this is how you catch on. <laughs> That's one but of my I'm favorite so stories. It was our 30 minute lunch break turned into 40 minutes of not actually casting on because everybody was debating on the best way to do a slip knot. So I, <laughs> that was my have, introduction to knitting. We all have our own ideas about the best way to teach a beginner knitter. So well, you're doing a marvelous. I got there. Yeah. Thanks. And that's a uh, Nimbus Overtone that you're using for your sweater. Uh, it is Nimbus. It is, yes, yeah. Overtone. It's hard to see. The lighting up here isn't that great, but. It's such a good little, like, periwinkle color. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first one when I saw the palette up on our board. It was the one that I was just like, I'm going to knit something in that. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to knit that. So. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm always excited when you want to like talk about future projects. <laughs> oh, I was doing that today for one of our upcoming uh, pullover sweaters that I just can't get out of my head. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't talk yeah. much more about it, but some yeah. beautiful cables happening and it has to be mine. Yeah. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I'm so like, I feel honored that this is like when you wanted to share your knitting publicly. <laughs> yeah. I know I haven't done it yet. I've not even posted anything. Like I've not posted on mm -hmm. Ravelry or anything yet. So this is a true first. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thanks. <laughs> Eric, I see your hand raised. Oh. Hello. Oh, yes, I'm just going to show that that's, Tell us more. The, that's the knitting barber. Uh, is the name of the cord. So if you're looking for those, that's what they are. Thank um, you. These were actually gifted to me from the Knitting Loft here in Toronto. And it comes in a kit. So it's got three cords in the little tin. I don't know what it costs because I didn't buy it. Um, but there's one, uh, two. So these are like for using for sleeves. So it basically is set up for sweaters. So those are for sleeves and then one long one for the body. Um, so I actually used this to try on the Ott sweater as well. And it was super easy. It just like, it's almost like a Chinese finger puzzle. You put it on the end of the, the tip of the needle and then the stitches just slide right on it. The first time it's a little sticky because I think it's made of silicone. Um, mm -hmm. But then like it got smoother afterwards, but the stitches just slid right on. And then to put the needle back on, you just do it in reverse order. You just put it on the one side and then you just slip all the stitches right back on. I was really cautious because I wanted to make sure they didn't pop off, um, you know, inadvertently, but it was almost like magic. Like they're really, really worth it. Um, I don't know, like I will never use just waste yarn again. Like I would just rather buy more sets of these and just put them in every bag because it's really handy. Um, there's almost like there's a little memory to them, but hardly anything like they've been out since I just opened it and it's like they're pretty straight. So anyway, I just wanted to share. If Thank you. Wow, that's so clever. I, Thank you. I have a question about that. Um, yeah. 
It sounds like it's a casing and it'll go over different needle tips, different it's, size it's needle little, tips. Yeah, it's a little hollow tube. You can't see it because it's really, really thin, but it's like the size of like, I don't know, I'm comparing it to tones now. It's about this, maybe it's a little smaller diameter, but it's hollow. So it fits over the tip of the needle. It goes like right in, like here's my needle tip. And you just sort of put it on and it just sort of wedges on. And then it's like. And do you know if there are ranges of sizes of needles that you can use with that? Um, it doesn't say, but I would imagine because it goes on the tip, unless the tip is like super, super blunt, like an Addy Clicks needle or something, it's probably going to work. Well, I thank like you it. for showing that. Uh, no it, it would certainly be better than a second circular, which is my usual method. Yeah. And they come in like, I don't know if it'll really show it here, but like all of these colors, you can get them in all different colors. Oh, okay. So they're kind of cute, but um, Thanks. yeah, no problem. Happy to share. The only other thing that I was going to ask is um, we've had this little side conversation, Catherine, I'm looking at you, dear. If we all want you to do a Zoom 101 for crochet, because now I want to make a granny square blanket. <laughs> yeah. Please do. It's been a while since I've crocheted anything. I think it would be well attended. Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. I think we can put that in the discussion book. Yeah, no pressure though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll just snap everybody into shape here with the crochet hooks. <laughs> Oh, is there any, anything else any people want to share? I saw a beautiful picture of Wind Sweater. I know you said it was blocking right now. But oh, yeah. I think it turned out beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. I just wanted to say this is my first knit along with you guys, and I appreciate what you guys do there very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Win. It was so Wynn. great to have you as part of this. We love connecting with everybody. It's, it's, um, we love working with each other, um, obviously, but it's also, uh, it can get lonely when, when we don't have like the knit ups and the, the meetups and the, um, the fiber festivals that we're all used to going to. So I don't know, Zoom, Zoom has been really wonderful to be able to connect with, with people again. So thanks for coming. I find it really great to be able to meet with people in different parts of the world too, you know, because everybody's a little bit different. I'm here in Cleveland, which is kind of similar to Chicago. Uh, I think Caleb's over there in Chicago, but um, you know, it's a different perspective I hear from people in different areas. So I, I value that too. Thanks. So zoom is, I think a good tool all the time, even when you get back in person. <laughs> Completely. Yeah, agree. for sure. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for thank coming, you. Regina. I posted in the um, in the chat. If we now have thanks to Tammy, uh, we have a mm -hmm. new events page. Um, so there's a link there if if you ever um, would like to see what upcoming Zoom events we have going. Um, so we our next one is on November 11th um, to celebrate our holiday 21 launch party, um, which is mostly accessories, um, but we have two sweater patterns coming out in that collection. So excited to see that come out. It can also be an unofficial early birthday party for me because my birthday is the next day after that. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Definitely. Uh, the page, let's see. I'll link it for you again, Jedi. I have it open. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, yeah, we only got a few minutes left. Um, I could ramble a little bit more about how thankful I am for all of you and for all of your participation. Uh, or if anyone has questions or things they want to share. Uh, oh, Eric's asking what's next on my needles. Um, so I'm, I've been working on trying to design a lace capelet. I'm getting married next summer and I tried on this really beautiful, like, very diaphanous like tool capelet at a store and realized that I wanted to like try to recreate it and I have no idea if that's gonna work or not um but that's like what's next is I've been swatching and <sighs> trying to figure out like what lace patterns I'm gonna use and there's a surprising like dearth of um 
patterns in the style that I want um, on Ravelry. And so I'm basically going to use like an Elizabeth Zimmerman style pie shawl recipe and just work it flat with a split on one side, I think, and then do some short rows so that it's longer in the back. Uh, but yeah, that'll be a, a process. Um, and I'm going to start it pretty much as soon as I'm done with my bouquet sweater. <laughs> so at least hopefully I got to be kept accountable. I might just keep putting it off. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> it's so exciting. Thank Mary. I can't wait. Thank you. Mary, thank you on the behalf of the team too for, for leading the KL, putting it together, for filming all the tutorial videos. And <laughs> your constant well, thank you optimism. To all of you. <laughs> yeah, it would it would not have been, you know, anything if it weren't for all of y'all, you know, and all of your your wonderful participation. It's been incredible to to do this and to see all of your projects. So thank you so much to everyone. <laughs> yeah okay well uh yeah please do come to our our holiday 21 zoom uh that's gonna be really fun we've got some fun patterns coming up um and yeah thank you also to jen for co-hosting and to liz for co-hosting last time and kel and allison before that um allison's in europe right now and we're all very jealous um but yeah it's been it's been really fun so <sighs> I'm going to leave it open for another couple minutes and then, then we'll say goodbye. Liz, we never heard from you. Do you have anything to share? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Never mind. <laughs> you are putting me on the spot. Um, yeah. no, I just, yeah. I mean, it's been really, it's been really fun. Um, I think I've tried to do, knit alongs in the past and always dropped out. And so this is my first one. Um, also like committing to it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, and I actually see, I forgot to, to talk about this, but, um, we do have prizes at the end of the knit along. Um, we were, we were asked, like, people were asking about, um, entering in them, but they, the winners of those prizes will be chosen by random drawing. I'm basically going to use a random number generator, um, but I'll be doing the drawings for that, um, probably the day or two after November 3rd. So, uh, we have some great, some great prizes available. So if you would like to do that, make sure you post in Ravelry or Instagram. So yeah, thanks so much. I see people talking about Dune. <laughs> it's coming. Here is the mind killer. <laughs> On the big screen is the best way to see it. Yeah. Can't wait to hear yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, have fun, everybody. Thank you again so much. And yeah, we'll see you at the end of the knit along. Mm -hmm.